Walk right into Rin Lake College and sign up for fall classes. No appointment necessary. With more than 100 degree and certificate programs, RLC can put you on the fast track to a new career or to continue your education. More affordable than four-year universities and private schools, you can save thousands of dollars at RLC. Our trained academic counselors will make sure you're on the right path, whether you plan to transfer to a four-year university or head straight into the workforce. Walk-in registration continues through August 15th. Call us at 437-5321 or find us online at rlc.edu. Rin Lake College. Your journey starts here. Welcome back to Sound Off here on WQRL. We roll into hour number two, and again, glad to have you alongside with us tonight. I'm going to say there's a lot of folks around Southern Illinois that are very, very busy these days, but I'm going to put my money on our next guest being the busiest man in in, in Southern Illinois. We're happy to welcome to the program Shannon Woodworth. He is the the manager of the DuCoin State Fair, and they're poised for a Friday evening opening at DuCoin. Shannon, how are you tonight? I'm doing great, Jim. Thank you so much for having me on your show. We really appreciate you being with us. And uh, my, what a great lineup you've put together. And everything kicks off this weekend. And uh, very exciting shows coming up at DuCoin this week, Shannon. Well, I call this first weekend an all-star weekend. Uh, We've got uh, two acts that uh, probably rarely ever going to sing a song that hasn't been a number one at one time or another. Foreigner on uh, Saturday night. Uh, incidentally, that is uh, the largest paid show that we've had in DuCoin since 2001 when Kenny Chesney was here. And then on Sunday night, we're going to follow up with uh, the legendary, the great one, Kenny Rogers. And so, as you said, uh, you and I have had some conversations. In, in Virtually any song you're going to hear uh, Saturday night or Sunday night is either a number one or a hit. It's absolutely. <laughs> and I know one of the things that we've talked about, Shannon, one of the things that you in your first year there as the manager of the fair, you really have stressed is the free entertainment and making this a, a, a fair that, that uh, people are not going to have to spend an arm and a leg to come in and have a, have a, a full day and night of entertainment. That's the truth. And, uh, you know, we start with the theme of the fair this year, which is love a fair. And uh, folks in southern Illinois have loved their fair for 92 years. They have had a relationship and a bond with this fair for all of that time that has not been broken. And the folks from southern Illinois in this region turn out to this fair because they love it. In return, we want to open our arms to the folks in this region and in southern Illinois and let them know how much we care about them. And part of that is to be able to offer... uh, entertainment and uh, educational opportunities on this fairground for uh, uh, many, many of those uh, opportunities for free. Park uh, your vehicle for $7. $7 pulls you onto these fairgrounds, gives you opportunity to park your vehicle. You can bring your whole family in onto these fairgrounds. There's so many free things to do throughout this fair that you cannot do all of the free things that we have to offer in one day. And, and uh, I want to take you back to the grandstand area uh, uh, while we mentioned the foreigner and, and Kenny Rogers. Uh, I'm excited about Monday night. I, I'm an old classic country guy, Waylon <laughs> Willie and, and, and that bunch. And, and uh, Travis Tritt comes in on Monday night, and, and I think he'll put on a great show. Oh, absolutely. A lot of enthusiasm for Travis Tritt, too. We don't want to sell him short. Uh, it's going to be a great show. Talk also about the Tuesday night uh, lineup. The John Henninger band, uh, band comes in. Give us some insight about that group. Well, they're just an outstanding contemporary uh, Christian group. And uh, what I want to make a point about is uh, they're going to make history. They're going to make history Tuesday night uh, at the Ducoin State Fair. Uh, there's been a tremendous amount of uh, some of the greatest entertainers in the history of this world that have played in Ducoin. But the John Henniger Band from Mount Vernon is going to be the first local band to ever play an opening grandstand act in DuCoin. This is going to be history, Jim. That's great. And then on Wednesday night, a twist. Uh, I think a really <laughs> unique uh, thing is going to happen on Wednesday. USA Championship Wrestling. Jerry the King Lawler's coming in. What, what an interesting <laughs> night that should be. Oh, man. I mean, if you're into wrestling, you know who Jerry the King Lawler is. You know this guy, and you know him to be a legend. You know him to be uh, a pro 
uh, in the Pro Wrestling Hall of Fame, and you know him to still be the voice of uh, WWE Raw, which is one of the biggest uh, wrestling shows in the entire world. And he's going to be here, and he's going to be in action against Scott Steiner. I also want to mention, though, that uh, Jerry the King Lawler is going to be here Friday night for the parade. He's going to uh, he's going to participate in the ribbon cutting as we open up the fair. He's going to ride in the parade, and after the parade, he's going to sign autographs for free inside the grandstand. It's going to be a great time for people in this region to get to meet a, a, a pro wrestling legend uh, up close and face to face. And then on Thursday night, we come back with some more uh, classic rock with uh, with 38 Special coming in. Aren't they great? I'm telling you, I, I've been listening to them uh, uh, it, it just for a long time, and uh, I can't get enough of them. And uh, to have 38 Special come uh, here to Southern Illinois and entertain us in the in the uh, in the week like that is uh, is just uh, an incredible opportunity for folks around here. And Shannon, they, the the country theme continues on on Friday night when Rodney Atkins takes the grandstand stage at 7:30 p.m. Rodney Atkins, and uh, you know, uh, he's had some great hits, and uh, he had a hit uh, in uh, in the early 2000s that uh, was the the biggest played song in the entire year, and that's uh, when you're going through hell, you got to keep on going, and uh, he's an inspiration. He's got hits. He's uh, He's, he's going to be a great show, Jim. And uh, I know you and I have chatted uh, several times through the summer as you were putting the lineup together. And I know the Saturday on the Saturday, August 30th, <laughs> you've been about as excited about that group as any, as any group that will be there. KC and the Sunshine Band comes KC in on Saturday, August 30th. the Sunshine Band. And I'm telling you what, uh, I can't uh, – uh, I think about all the groups that we have. They're all tremendous. They're all going to be fun. They're all going to be exciting to watch. But – Man, I think when you come to Casey and the Sunshine Band, that's going to be one. That's going to be one concert that you're going to walk out of, and you're going to feel so much better than you did when you came. I mean, this this, this is a uh, this is a group that uh, as we were looking at the layout on it, it's almost like a circus on stage with all of the uh, dancers and the uh, instruments, and it, it, I, I can't see anything but incredible written all over this concert. And then on the, on Sunday, uh, August 31, you sat car races, plus there will be harness racing. So activity just for every age and, and, and uh, just about for everybody. Yeah, well, absolutely. And then, you know, the, the big car races on uh, Monday. And let's talk about Monday, too, if you don't mind, about the uh, uh, Veterans Appreciation Day. Jim, this is going to be the first time in the history of the fair where we're going to have free parking for veterans. Listen, if you're a veteran and you're hearing me right now, it's free parking for veterans. But we don't end there. Not only is there going to be free parking for veterans, Jim, there's going to be free food for our nation's heroes. Free parking, free food, and there's going to be free entertainment throughout the afternoon. All of this takes place in VIP Tent 1. We want all of our veterans to know that they are welcome to come out to the fairgrounds and partake in this uh, Appreciation Day. We want to salute them. We want to honor them. We want to, uh, we want our veterans to know that we care. And, and, Shannon, I've had a chance to walk the fairgrounds the last couple of days, and it's like watching a city be built, isn't it? It really <laughs> is. Uh, you start out Monday morning and everything's kind of bare, and then all of a sudden it just starts coming up. It's pretty neat. It goes up fast, doesn't it? It really does. It's in a great atmosphere there. And, and I can't get over the, as you mentioned, the free, I'm looking through the, the program book at the free entertainment, uh, and not only at, at the various locations, at the beer tent, some great some great entertainment there. So there's a lot of great things happening that you can just sit back and pack your foot and enjoy yourself. Jim, we're talking about 92 of the greatest uh, bands in this entire region. 92. I said 92 different local uh, in regional bands that will be playing on the fairgrounds during the 10-day uh, span. You know, something else, Shannon, I want you to talk about, and, and it's something I think is really important uh, to what happens in DuCoin. It's labeled as the DuCoin State Fair, but it's a fair that really is, is really key and instrumental for all of Southern Illinois. It, it, it brings people to this region. People are staying in Carbondale and Mount Vernon and Benton and, and Marion and then, and then traveling to DuCoin. So it's something that's really an, an econ has an e economic impact on, on the entire region. Yes, it does, Jim. And, you know, we haven't done an economic impact study 
on the New Coin State Fair since uh, 2000. So it's been 14 years since we've done a study. But 14 years ago, the economic impact on uh, southern Illinois was uh, $20 million. I can only imagine what it is now. We uh, we need to revive that. We need to get a new study done. Um, now, I've gone around. I've talked to uh, as many city councils as I could go to, as many civic clubs as I've gone to, uh, as I could possibly go to, and, and, and I've talked about the economic impact. And the economic impact is great. It's huge. It's important. There's no doubt about that. But in my heart, Jim, I've said over and over again, there's something greater than the economic impact of the Ducoin State Fair, and that's the human impact of the Ducoin State Fair. To be able to bring your entire family to the fairgrounds for $7 parking, no admission fee, no admission fee, we're one of the few state fairs left in this entire nation that does not have an admission fee. You park for $7. You can bring your whole family in on the fairgrounds. You don't have to spend another dime if you don't want to. Come in on these fairgrounds and enjoy all the free entertainment that we have here. You walk out as a family. The human impact is that uh, your, your your sons and your daughters look at uh, look at you like your your kings and queens. You have brought them out to have some of the greatest, absolutely greatest educational and uh, and en- entertainment opportunities in this entire nation come out you have a good time you enjoy the time with your family you bond with your family this is the human impact of the Ducoin state fair and shannon give us the give us the uh, details also uh, of the uh, opening of the fair on friday afternoon i think the parade kicks off i have a ribbon cutting talk about that yeah come on out to the ribbon cutting come on out to the parade the ribbon cutting is going to take place at 5 30 5 30 p.m out at the uh, front gate like i said jerry the king Waller. Uh, legendary pro wrestler. He's going to be a part of the ribbon cutting. We're going to go out. We're going to cut a ribbon. We're going to say a few speeches. We're going to have a great time. And then at 6 o'clock, the parade kicks off. Jim, this is the biggest parade in uh, in anyone's memory out here. We're going to have 2,000 individuals involved in this parade. We've got Clydesdale horses. We've got Tow Mater from uh, the uh, Disney movie Cars. Uh, we've got bands, we've got uh, the, the wrestler, we've got everything that you could possibly ever want to see in a parade. It's going to be in the parade this Friday. We want folks to come out. You can line up along uh, Route 51, or you can make it right inside of the uh, gate of the fairground. And uh, uh, just come out, and, and it's going to be an incredible time and an incredible fair. And we just want folks to take time to enjoy it. And one thing we didn't mention, I want to hit on before we go. Uh, I had a chance yesterday to talk with Freddie Miller from Miller Spectacular Shows. 44, 44 rides in the Midway, the biggest Midway ever at DuCoin. Three rides that have never been there before. So mm-hmm. uh, it's a sprawling Midway. I mean, they are they are really, uh, the, I mean, just huge and, uh, uh, and, and a great price on the wristband tickets. Oh, yeah. But, you know, Jim, those are major league rides. Absolutely. <laughs> These are major league rides. This is uh, this is no small stuff, and uh, you know you you can come out and uh, Lord, it's uh, it's it, and, and as you said, Fre- Freddie and his group they travel the country. They do the greatest job, and uh, you you come out here and and you can feel secure uh, that you've got the uh, safest and most secure rides that uh, you could ever put your uh, self on or your children on. And at the same time, these are such great rides that's going to give you the thrill of your lifetime. Yeah, when, when I spoke with him yesterday, he had, he told me that in fact the people were there then from St. Louis. They they, he met, they meet all the eye visual standards. Then they were doing magnetic particle testing, uh, ultrasound testing, and radiography testing yeah, on all the yeah. equipment. So uh, as you said, they go way above and beyond what's what what the state says they should do. So oh, um, yeah. There's no question about that. They are above and beyond everything. That's how much they care. Absolutely. So, Shannon, hey, I want to throw this out uh, as a final thought for you. Uh, your first year on the job, you've done a tremendous job over there uh, at DuCoin, and we certainly, I think I speak for everybody in Southern Illinois, uh, you've, done, you've done a great job and brought a great lineup to the fair for, for 2014. Uh, Jim, I'm going to tell you, you know, this fair belongs to the people. And uh, God has just blessed me enough to be able to uh, help put it together. And uh, it's been a tremendous blessing to me. 
And uh, in turn, I want it to be a tremendous blessing to all the folks in southern Illinois and this entire region. Very good. Thank you so much for your time tonight. I look forward to seeing you during the run of the fair. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Have uh-huh. a great night. You too. That is Shannon Woodworth. He is the uh, manager of the Ducoin State Fair. Kicks off on uh, on uh, Friday night. Friday, you heard him say, 5 o'clock on the parade. Um, one quick story, uh, and then we'll go to break. He talked about the Miller Spectacular Rides. You think your job is bad sometimes? Um, they, I, I talked, I, I, they, they go through uh, 11 states over a nine-month period. Uh, Miller Spectacular shows. I mean, this is a huge operation. Probably has got 25 or 30 semi trucks with the, that pull the equipment and pull the other other equipment. I asked him about where do you go from Ducoin. He goes to Lubbock, Texas. Now listen to this. He's got 44 rides. He, he gets done on September the 1st at midnight. He's got 44 rides to break down. All these trucks, this massive convoy, goes 1,100 miles to Lubbock, Texas, for a show that begins on the 5th of September. So he's got he's got four days to get a, get all that equipment, 1,100 miles, get it all set back up again for a Saturday afternoon start on September the 5th. You think your job's tough? Maybe not as tough as what some guys have. So in any event, uh, uh, we appreciate Shannon being with us tonight for the. Uh, for the uh, to get us uh, kicked off on the uh, on the 2014 Ducoin State Fair again, uh, they'll be uh, kicking off on uh, on sa- on Friday. But Saturday it's Foreigner Sunday, Kenny Rogers Monday, Travis Tritt. That's three great groups right in a row. 38 specials in there. Uh, also KC and the Sunshine Band the next weekend. So some great great entertainment coming up at the uh, 92nd annual Ducoin State Fair. Let's get a quick break in. We'll come back. You're tuned to Sound Off. Back after these messages. Stop sitting around looking at your yard wishing for something better. Whether you dream of an island oasis, a relaxation haven, or just to be the talk of the neighborhood, Jesse Drew Rock and Material has the materials to match your imagination. Decorative landscaping, driveway rock, topsoil, sand, mulch, or lime, Jesse Drew Rock and Material has what you need to turn your yard into a place where you can relax and be the envy of your neighbors. Seems like a lot of work, right? Wrong. Let Jesse and his crew spread dirt or mulch with their bobcat. It's that easy. Quick delivery and rock bottom prices on quality materials. Your yard or landscaping project won't know what hit it. Transform your project into something you've always imagined with a variety of colored mulches and rock in all sizes. For the homeowner, professional landscaper, or even the contractor, Jesse Drew Rock and Materials' job is to help get your job done. Call Jesse Drew Rock and Material at 927-7857. 927-7857. Walk right into Rin Lake College and sign up for fall classes. No appointment necessary. With more than 100 degree and certificate programs, RLC can put you on the fast track to a new career or to continue your education. More affordable than four-year universities and private schools, you can save thousands of dollars at RLC. Our trained academic counselors will make sure you're on the right path, whether you plan to transfer to a four-year university or head straight into the workforce. Walk-in registration continues through August 15th. Call us at 437-5321 or find us online at rlc.edu. Rin Lake College. Your journey starts here. Welcome back to Sound Off here on WQRL. That would have been a little Kenny Rogers right there, I think, bringing us in. And appreciate that. Kenny Rogers will be at the fair Sunday night. Looking forward to uh, to seeing that show when uh, the gambler comes into town. I've been a Kenny Rogers fan uh, back in the day when it was he was a member of the first edition. If you go back that far, you go back a long ways. He was a member of the first edition, and then uh, then he went out on his own and had a he had a remarkable career that probably has spanned. I guess 50 years. So uh, we're going to pick back up where we left off before the break. And if you, if anybody has any more interest in this, in this story, we're going to continue talking about it. The, the it's a story that has pretty much gripped the nation. It's a, it's a story out of uh, uh, Ferguson, Missouri, and it all began on August the 9th, uh, as I'm sure you're well aware. When uh, when uh, Michael Brown, an 18 year old uh, uh, youth from uh, from Ferguson, was uh, was killed by police officer. Darren Wilson after an altercation. Uh, 
certainly there's there's bit differing stories that go along with this. Um, one one angle I want to pick back up again after I kind of give you the scenario of what we're talking about. Uh, there had been a robbery uh, uh, called in, uh, as, as and then the, later on video released uh, later on in the week. But uh, all they knew at the time there had been a robbery at a, at a uh, convenience store. Uh, so they called it a strong arm robbery. No weapons involved, but it was clear, there clearly there was some physical force used by Michael Brown, who was 6'4 and weighs 300 pounds. He's 18 years old. Um, and uh, he was in the street with another another young man, and um, the officer confronted them, and that's when things went south in a hurry. That's when the their differing stories go. Um, Darian, uh, Dorian Johnson, I believe is his name, uh, it was the young man with him. He alleges that the officer cursed at them, told him to get out of the street, and then an altercation took place. Uh, we've not heard what the officer's eye of that story was, but there was an altercation. Reports are now out that, that, uh, that Brown reached in the car and, and uh, attacked the officer. Uh, two, two to three different sources are now reporting that, that, um, that uh, 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 Darren Wilson suffered a broken orbital bone, uh, eye socket bone. Uh, in the altercation, he got out of the car as, as the two, um, uh, as uh, Brown and Johnson walked up the street. And then that's when, uh, again, things were sketchy. Uh, according to some reports, uh, Brown uh, Wilson said, told him to freeze. He didn't. He was shot. He turned and attacked and charged the the uh, the officer and was shot five more times. Uh, there, I'm very anxious to hear where his body was at in comparison to where the officer was at when um, when the, he finally went down uh, from a head wound. Um, a head shot, I guess I should say, but um, the the one I think one of the troubling things to me is that the one eyewitness that they're relying on, it seems like that a lot of the media and uh, those who are there uh, in on the front lines, the Reverend Al Sharpton and Jesse Jackson, uh, the. the the one eyewitness they're relying on is the other person that was involved in the robbery. And so his word, uh, as compared to the word of an officer uh, who has not got a blemish on his record uh, as a six-year member of the police force, uh, his word compared to the, the to the suspect to a suspect in a, in a robbery, uh, I think I'm taking the word of the officer. That's just my thinking. Uh, but but uh, uh, and, and then things have been out of hand since. There have been riots, protests, and then the looting. And uh, and and clearly uh, it, it continues on. With some of the reports I heard earlier tonight, I've not heard, I've not uh, saw any news accounts in the last uh, couple hours. But uh, early tonight things were a little quieter. In, uh, in Ferguson, you hope this thing is losing some steam as far as the protest and the riots go, uh, and, and you hope that justice prevails. That's, that's the key component here. We've made that statement since the first minute we started talking about this last Wednesday night, is that if the officer is guilty, then we hope that he is, con- he is charged and, and prosecuted and, 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 uh, with, with a, as as J- Governor Jay Nixon said, a vigorous prosecution, but that would only come after all the facts are in. And and uh, one of my concerns, though, is can Darren Wilson get a fair shake now? Because there's going to be there's going to be those who are going to be very concerned that if they say we're not indicting him, if a grand jury turns back a, uh, t- comes back and says no, there's no there's no evidence here that that supports a, an, a, us in, uh, handing down an indictment against him, then where does the racial element go in this, and and do we start all over again in uh, in Ferguson, Missouri? That's one of the key things I think that uh, that will be on a lot of people's minds, uh, and I hope. That Darren uh, Wilson is not used as a sacrificial lamb uh, because of the racial component in this. Uh, again, um, you know, I, the the thing that troubles me about this is I hear these, and, and I'm going to go back to this, and then we're going to move on to something else after our break. But uh, unless we get more more interest in it, and people want to talk about, it, then we'll continue on. But something that that is troubling to me, I listen to the comments, I read the comments of these of these young black men on the streets in Ferguson, many of them from out, many of them from out of the area. And I listen to the comments they're making about 
about justice and them being oppressed and 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 uh, uh, the, the 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 fact that they're a uh, that they're a minority and that they're they they're, uh, they give the impression that they are beaten down oppressed and that uh, that we're living back in the 1950s. Um, you know, I I thought it's it's interesting it's interesting to me that you have. A, a mentality like that on the street, and then you read the you read on in, uh, uh, on other uh, news sites about President Obama, who is a black president, sends Attorney General Eric Holder, who is a black Attorney General, to Ferguson to investigate this. And and you know what the federal government investigating this? I'm fine with that. That, that, that. If they if they want to conduct their own investigation. I'm fine with that. that. I think that that just adds another layer of transparency to this. You hope it does anyway to go along with it with a state investigation of this. But I find it almost it's almost laughable to me when you say, "Okay, we live in a nation where where a black man can can uh, climb to the heights to be the most powerful man in the world of the richest." most powerful country in the world, a black man can, can, can go to those heights. Uh, and and the, the, the person that he instructs to go to, to Ferguson, Missouri, can reach the height of Attorney General of the United States. I mean, what, what, type of, what, type, what does that say about our country that, that, that it says that you can be what you want to be if you want to, if you want to uh, uh, exert yourself, and if you want to uh, to, to uh, succeed, you can. You're going to have to work hard at it, and you're not going to work hard by you're not going to you're not going to uh, you're not going to rise to those to that level. If you're out on the streets of Ferguson, uh, throwing bricks through the window of a convenience store so you can steal twelve cartons of cigarettes, but to me, it's almost. It's almost contradictory when you when you hear people saying we're beat down, we're oppressed by the white man who's got his foot on our throat, and then you look up and you see the president of the United States is a black man. Um, I, I'm t- I'm kind of tired of hearing it. I, I really am. I'm tired of hearing that. Do, are, do we need do we need to improve race relations in the United States? Yeah. But we need to improve a lot of things in the United States. You know, these these guys that are running up and down the streets in Ferguson, they're talking about being oppressed and being put down. I can point to areas of southern Illinois here where the unemployment rate's off the charts, where the poverty rate's off the charts, where the teen pregnancy rate's off the charts, and where the population is 95% white. So it's not just uh, – it, some, some of the things they're talking about are not exclusive to black people only. There's a lot of people in this country that are beat down and oppressed that that uh, that aren't in a minority. They're in a minority because they're never going to get out of the counties they live in, and they're going to be living their reliving the vicious little cycle that they're in. So to me, it's it's really contradictory to, for 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 to hear that and and to keep hearing that. But that's when you bring Al Sharpton in to make comments about we're tired of this happening all the time. It doesn't happen all the time. It doesn't happen all the time. And again, we throw out the numbers. Ninety-six percent of the of the of the murders of black people are by other black people. Ninety-six percent is black on black crime. If there's a if there is an issue that needs to be tackled uh, that that would help uh, that would help the, the nation, that would seem like that would be a place to go for for uh, for Reverends uh, Jackson and and Sharpton to uh, pursue that matter. But they can't. Because it's there's no com- racial component to divide, divide, and um, it's to me it's very troubling. It's more of a culture thing. I really believe it's more of a culture thing. Um, uh, it, it's it's a it's a situation where you've got. Uh, I think a lot of these leaders have got have got the same mentality as many people do these days. It's an entitlement mentality. It's free stuff. I want more free stuff. And here's my way of getting it. I'm going to throw a brick through that window, and I'm going to go get it. So, uh, uh, in any event, it, it's a story that's not going to go away. Uh, it's a story we're going to continue to watch. And and uh, uh, not sure, maybe things are starting to, to to recede a little bit as far as the tension, and as far as the uh, the uh, you know, at, at some point it's going to run out of steam. There's no question about it. Uh, it's going to run out of steam because. Um, 
first of all, uh, you you've got to have uh, you got to have money to stay in Ferguson, Missouri, and some of these people have traveled in and. Uh, where they're staying at, that that's another question. So you, you're not going to camp out there for a month. Um, the, you wonder where the hot weather, the, the, have, we've been blessed all summer, but you wonder how the hot weather is going to stoke this thing. Whether I thought about that today when the humidity goes sky high and the temperature's up there in the mid-90s, and, and you think, oh, boy, you know, uh, but, but they say the streets were pretty pale today uh, and, and pretty empty in, um, in Ferguson, and maybe, that, maybe that's keeping a few people back uh, in the air conditioning. So, uh, but, but to me, the, the, I'm not sure it's gone from a – I think it's gone from a racial – Issue, or maybe it never was a racial issue as much as it was a culture, a cultural issue, where where you have uh, uh, a culture, a mentality that um, that that says, hey, you know, um, I want something for free, and if I, as long as I can keep playing the victim here and being the minority and being the one beat down, I can get what I want for free. Uh, but that mentality is hard for me to take when you see. Black people like old President Obama and Eric Holder that, that go to some of the highest offices in the land. Uh, it's contradictory and it's kind of hypocritical. I think when when you want to talk about, do we need to make again? Do we need to make uh, uh, more advances in, in in race? Absolutely, but we need more advances in a lot of things, not just race. So let's get a quick break. It. We do have a call. Okay, let's go back to our phone lines and let's go to our to our phone lines and we'll tell you welcome to Sound Off. Go right ahead. Hi, Jim. Uh... I'd rather not say my name, but okay. uh, I would I would like to address the fact on Ferguson, not you know a, about the horrible things that happened in Ferguson, Missouri, but all the local business owners that are there that have had businesses there maybe fifteen, twenty, twenty five years, and now their businesses are being violated by people you know upset, angry. Who's there to protect them? It's a great question. Great point. You know, and I know there's, you know, local law enforcement trying to do their best, but uh, it makes me, uh, you know, a friend of Southern Illinois want to go down there and help out and uh, stand by these guys that have had, you know, businesses for 20, 25 years. It, it's very disturbing. I think it, I think that's a great point. That's something we've not we've not hit on in this show. I, and I think I think the fact that I think you're dead on as far as the 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 comments you make. I, and I, what concerns me too is that. You wonder some of these businesses that have, like the, the, the one convenience store that has been gutted by fire. I, I read this week where they took the gas tanks out of the ground uh, just this, this past week. So that tells me they're done. They're not coming back there. And, and so you're going to lose you're going to lose the sales tax. You're going to lose jobs that were there. So and and how many more businesses along the way are, are going to do the same thing? So great points you make, and and you wonder about the police officers. Yeah, who who's who's going to help these business owners? Great question. Great point. Right. Yeah, I'm just I'm curious about that, and uh, that is what uh, you know keeps Ferguson and Missouri alive are all those great small businesses. So who's going to help them out? And that's pretty just. Pretty much my point, Jim. Uh, we, great, great point. We appreciate your phone call. Thank you much. All right, thank you. Uh, and and the, see, that's another angle to this. That and and you know, I read the story where the, they 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 went in with a they went in, dug the ga- the gas tanks out of the ground, covered them back, covered the holes back in, and they're done. And so that tells you right there that that convenience store, uh, which you know had it had employees, uh, they're 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 out of business. And so uh, and and then when you get a national black eye like this. You tell me anybody that's wanting to relocate as far as population, anybody wanting to move to Ferguson, you tell me about businesses wanting to go there. And I think it's given a black eye to the entire region. And, and uh, so, um, you know, it, that, that's, that's a component we haven't even talked about, about the business angle, not to mention that most communities, and, we, you know, we, we know how things work as far as uh, most municipalities are, are struggling for cash right now, so sales tax, it is a big part of what they take in, uh, and and gas tax, sales tax, they're going to lose that now. And how much? And then and then another thing uh, that, that kind of goes along hand in hand with that, schools were set to open in Ferguson last week. They were supposed to open like Thursday or Friday last week. They still haven't opened. And so the, you're, you're pushing kids' education back. Uh, they, I've read some things today where they may try again next week. But still yet, you've lost probably five, six days of school, and, and there's no guarantee that things will go next week. Um, 
So then, then you start adding on days to the end of next year, and it, it just it's the 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 impact on the community has been uh, beyond what you see on the national TV. Uh, the the monetary impact, the, the the the, and I think the the probably just the, the fact the 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 total impact of what it's done uh, for morale for that community, and uh, it'll take a long time for uh, Ferguson, Missouri to, to crawl out from underneath this if they ever can crawl out from underneath it. And, and I, I, just, I think it's going to be really, really intriguing to see how this plays out. If they run, uh, if they run uh, uh, prosecutor, uh, prosecuting attorney Robert McCulloch, if they run him off, he's going to try the case, although there have been calls from the protesters. They don't want him trying the case. But then again, the protesters don't decide who tries cases. Uh, the, the prosecuting attorney, the attorney does, and he wants to prosecute the case. So, it, But we'll see how he handles this. I think another angle to this is um, uh, uh, the, the, the comments of, of uh, Ron Johnson with the Missouri Highway Patrol. He has kind of gotten warm and fuzzy with the... Um, with the uh, uh, protesters, and it kind of backfired on him. I think he thought he could coddle these guys and and uh, and talk nice to them and walk in some of the protests with them. And and uh, but it, and I think that kind of backfired on him. Uh, these guys are not going to listen to what's nice and 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 kind words. Uh, they're there for a reason. That's to uh, to uh, steal and destroy. Many of them are. Um, I read a story this week too. I'm going to get this in before we go to break. I read a story this week about uh, one of the news outlets talking about the fact. The police threw out tear gas. It was at 1 o'clock in the morning. Police threw out tear gas, shot tear gas out. And one of the riders was, was uh, um, uh, let, let, uh, just absolutely dressing the media down for throwing out this tear gas because children, there were three children ages like 10, 9, and 6 that were exposed to this tear gas on their skin and... and uh, my and, and my thought about this particular newscaster was to say, I wonder if it ever crossed your mind why a parent would have three children at a protest like this where guns are, are present, where tear gas, Molotov cocktails are being tossed. Why would a parent have three kids, 10, 8, and 7 years old at, at an event like this? What, what, what's the mentality of that person? Uh, that you would drag three kids out into the middle of that. Instead of looking at why the police threw out, uh, threw, shot tear gas into a crowd, why not ask somebody who's an idiot why they would drag three kids out at 1 o'clock in the morning uh, to the middle of, of, a, of a protest and a riot. Uh, that, that, to me, was, uh, was one of the more uh, asinine uh, reports that I had heard about the three children exposed to tear gas at the uh, at the event. So, uh, in, in any event, there's as we said, and we'll, we'll shift gears a little when we come back and try and wrap up some loose ends. But but certainly, there are a lot of layers to this story, and they're going to be continuing to be lots of layers to this story. And we'll, uh, as long as it remains a, a news topic, uh, we will continue to uh, try and peel those layers back for you here on sound off let's get a quick break in we'll come back and continue on back after these messages Walk right into Rin Lake College and sign up for fall classes. No appointment necessary. With more than 100 degree and certificate programs, RLC can put you on the fast track to a new career or to continue your education. More affordable than four-year universities and private schools, you can save thousands of dollars at RLC. Our trained academic counselors will make sure you're on the right path, whether you plan to transfer to a four-year university or head straight into the workforce. Walk-in registration continues through August 15th. Call us at 437-5321 or find us online at rlc.edu. Rin Lake College. Your journey starts here. This is Kern from Vogler Ford in Carbondale. We've got the Ford Summer Spectacular giveaway going on. If you can't wait to find out if you're a winner, come to Vogler Ford and buy a 2014 Ford Focus rated at up to 40 miles per gallon and get 0% APR for 60 months and a $1,000 rebate. Got to get to Vogler across from the mall in Carbondale. Your Wednesday night forecast on Q106 is brought to you by the Vogler Motor Company. 
They're located across from the University Mall in Carbondale. A heat advisory is in effect until 7 p.m. Saturday. Otherwise, it'll be partly cloudy across southern Illinois tonight, around 73. Mostly sunny on Thursday, high near 94. Mostly clear Thursday night, low 74. Sunny on Friday, high near 95. Mostly clear Friday night, low 75. Sunny on Saturday, high near 96. Mostly clear Saturday night, low 73. And for Sunday, it'll be sunny with a high near 95. And that's a check of your Wednesday night forecast on Q106. It's been brought to you by the Vogler Motor Company. You've got to get to Vogler. Welcome back to Sound Off here on WQRL. Again, glad to have you alongside with us tonight. And uh, we want to say a big thank you to all the calls on the topic of the uh, situation in uh, in uh, Ferguson, Missouri. That certainly adds a lot to our program. We uh, we kind of pride ourselves on uh, on being uh, uh, we want to hear from you, and, and uh, uh, that's what makes the show go as far as I'm concerned. So hearing, hearing uh, uh, the different opinions tonight and the different comments, and, and particularly uh, uh, the, uh, the ones I think that really added a lot, the one we appreciate the law enforcement comments about about the deadly force being used and also appreciate those calls out of St. Louis tonight uh, talking about the, the ones who, who actually knew uh, Darren Wilson and gave us some insight into into his personality and into his demeanor, and I thought that adds a lot to what we're doing here tonight, too. So a big thank you to all those calls. And I want to remind you quickly, too, that uh, before we get out of here tonight, don't forget to join us on uh, Saturday morning Talking Sports. We'll have, finish up our, our uh, conference uh, playoff uh, uh, football preview this weekend, and uh, we'll have coaches from the uh, Black Diamond Conference and from the Ohio side of the River to River Conference. And so we really look forward to that. Uh, we had a great Saturday last week talking to the South Seven coaches and to the uh, to the uh, Mississippi side of the river to river. So we'll finish things up this, this weekend and get you set for high school football that uh, unbelievably is going to be kicking off a week from Friday night uh, around here uh, in southern Illinois. So uh, uh, keep that in mind. Um, the, the topic of term limits has been one that we have discussed uh uh, just over and over again here on the program. Um, certainly, uh, we we have Bruce Rounder on the show. He's a he's a Republican candidate for candidate for governor. He's the one that's uh, not only bankrolling this event, but uh, uh, but also uh, pretty much the one has led the charge uh, on the uh, put the question on about term limits on the uh, November ballot. Uh, the the deadline is Friday. Um, uh, and um, so this is going to the appellate court. I think the the from what I have been able to read, the uh, the Illinois Supreme Court will not hear this case. So whatever they the um, whatever the uh, Illinois appellate court uh, uh, fifth district appellate court decides, uh, that will be the final say. Um, and uh, you know, reading the comments today of Rauner. Uh, the, the, he says the people of Illinois want term limits and they want the opportunity to vote on this. And I believe he's exactly right. We've, we've discussed this over and over and over again, and we have yet to have anybody call in with an opinion uh, other than the ones that Illinois needs term limits. And I think that's why uh, House Speaker Mike Madigan has fought this. Uh, so desperately, uh, desperate people do desperate things. He knows if he loses the term limits issue, then he loses uh, he loses some of his uh, control, and uh, and uh, that's one thing he's not going to lose. So uh, this will be decided in the next 48 hours. And you know, I've I've made the comment on this uh, many times. I really think, and I'm not, I'm not going to back away from this now. I really think that um, if this is booted off the ballot then I think that's our last chance to change things. Otherwise, it's not going to change. We're not going to be able to change things uh, in Illinois politically until until we can get the the people involved, um, uh, many of those involved, and that includes Madigan and Cullerton and some of them on the Republican side also out of office. We need new fresh thinking individuals uh, in place uh, to uh, to tackle some of these issues that are going on in the state of Illinois. Um, the it, it should be uh, really interesting to see how this plays out. I think there's going to be a backlash, uh, and I believe it could impact Democrats if, if Madigan succeeds in getting this kicked off the ballot because clearly 
I think the majority of people want this. And again, I think it's a last ditch effort for uh, for for the for the voters for for uh, John and Jane taxpayer uh, to get things changed to to have term limits on the ballot. That's the thing that troubles me about Matt, what Madigan is doing here is because. He thinks he knows bet what's better for you and I than what we think. What we know is better for you and I. He's in essence telling us you don't have enough whatever sense uh, uh, authority uh, to vote on this issue. Why shouldn't Why shouldn't this be left up to the voters to decide? That's my question. If If you think you've done such a great job, and you think everybody in the general assembly's done such a great job, then let the voters let the voters have a say in whether they want to keep you in place forever and ever and ever. So um, it'll be very very interesting to see how this plays out. And uh, I, I have to believe that if that if uh, if things change. Um, uh, if this is booted off the off the ballot, that there will be a backlash to this. I believe that. So we'll we'll see how it plays out, and certainly that will be one of the topics that we will be talking about uh, next uh, next Wednesday night because we'll know for sure what the decision is on that by then, and and uh, it will make a, a a huge impact, I think, on the election. I think it'll I think it'll draw it, I think it will up the ante as far as voter turnout if uh, if this is on the ballot. I think a lot of people uh, are very very uh, interested in in this particular topic. So, uh, and and also, I've talked about this on the program many times. Um, certainly, uh, they're, they're, the we've had Bruce Rounder on the show two three times, and and uh, one of the things that he um, uh, we we hear about is he's a rich guy. We we you know there's no there's no doubting about that. Uh, we had him on the show, and he told us he made fifty three million dollars last year, million dollars a week. Uh, so. Um, he he doesn't make any bones about it. He's wealthy. He's he's kicked millions and millions into his own campaign. Uh, and again, uh, you know, my my, my comments on that, uh, I would just as soon see uh, him pay the money. Uh, him pay money. Uh, we had one caller one night said he's trying to buy the election. I just assume him by the election as I would the special interest groups by the election. It seems to me that uh, uh, there, there would be less obligation involved uh, if uh, if he buys the election as compared to those who want something back in return. So, um, the, but but there's been a story this week that has uh, surfaced that that, that uh, uh, Governor Pat Quinn's crew is tossing this out uh, about Rauner and his investments in the Cayman Islands and. Uh, uh, about him trying to hide money there and uh, just on and on and on. And, you know, th- I'm going to say the same thing that I said when they started the, the comments about Rauner's uh, tax returns. I don't care. I don't care. I, I want to stress that again. I don't care about how much money he's got in the Cayman Islands. I don't care about his tax returns. What I do care about is 35% unemployment, uh, or th- I mean, pardon me, 35% Poverty level in uh, in Southern Illinois, ch- child poverty level. I care about unemployment off the charts. I care about Franklin County being the hundredth county out of 102 for the most unhealthy people in the state because of a lack of uh, of medical care uh, and because of uh, teen pregnancies and obesity and and uh, more people being more uh, uh, prone to diseases uh, because of all those factors. I care about that. Um, I care about uh, businesses shutting. Down down. I care about the coal industry uh, making a revival and trying to get jobs in Southern Illinois. Uh, I care about all of those things, and I don't give two hoots in Hades about uh, whether or not Rauner has money in the Cayman Islands. I hope he's. I don't care. I don't care, and I don't think the average Joe does care. I think the average Joe and Jane out there do care about um, about uh, uh, about paying the a state income tax, having it increased. Uh, about uh, I think they care they care about uh, businesses leaving Illinois. They don't care about those things, and I think that that Quinn is making a a very very grave mistake in um, in uh, pursuing that angle with him. I don't think it's catching on. The stories I read, Rauner is being hailed as the reformer, uh, whereas Quinn, who has labeled himself a reformer all of his all of his career as a politician, which dates back to the 70s, uh, uh, he is the one looked at now uh, as as the unreformer, or the non-reformer. So um, it'll be really interesting. But we're we're pushing. You know, they, they they we never seem like we get out of an election cycle now, but. 
but uh, they say the election actually takes off on Labor Day. That's when you, that's when the gloves come off, and that's when the heavy hitting starts. So, uh, you know, we're we're ten days away from that. So it's not going to be long uh, before uh, before we are into that uh, crazy season where there's what two months to go uh, for the from the November the fourth election. So it's 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 right around the corner. And um, and so again, I think they're wasting their time in trying to beat uh, the the war drums by telling you that. Uh, where, where Rauner has hit his money or how much money he makes or um, I don't think the average person out there cares. In fact, I think a lot of people I've talked to have said, hey, you know, if a guy can make a million dollars a week, then maybe he can figure out a way to get us out of the mess we're in here in, uh, in uh, Illinois with the underfunded pension and the $9 billion in unpaid bills and on and on and on and on and on. So uh, in any event, um, uh, that that's a story that's a non-story as far as I'm concerned when you start talking about uh, where Browner has his money. Let me remind you uh, that we're going to be with you next Wednesday night from the DuCoin State Fair. Uh, we've done that every year since 2000 when this show began, and uh, we'll continue doing that uh, this year. We'll broadcast sound off from the DuCoin State Fair. And speaking of the DuCoin State Fair, Ashley, can you get a mic hot in there? I'm going to talk to you a minute. Ashley Bites is in here tonight uh, handling the uh, the engineer duties for me. She's got, got a big role to fare this year. And, Ashley, uh, I think you've become friends with the Foreigner Group this week, haven't you? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> they really, you know, just have been super friendly. And their uh, PR person uh, reached out to me a couple weeks ago, and I know has with some of our other sister stations and stuff. Uh, they've just been wonderful. They are so excited about coming to the fair, and they uh, gave me some CDs to give away. They gave me um, some information about getting some more tickets to give away. They gave me a meet and greet pass to give away. Uh, we ran a radio special Monday. We're going to rerun it Thursday. I mean, they are really just uh, pumping things out there, which, of course, they've been busy on their summer tour. But they've been a lot of fun. And uh, you told me a story before we went on the air I wanted you to share with our listeners. The karaoke experience tonight. <laughs> we did. We did a karaoke. Uh, I, I called it the karaoke because uh, we have a tendency, and I say we, myself included, when we get in our cars and we turn our favorite songs on, we become rock stars instantly. So it was a karaoke contest this afternoon, and we had uh, four brave souls that participated, and we took phone votes from five to six, and then uh, we're letting people vote on Facebook and on Twitter uh, with the appropriate hashtag on on uh, Twitter and then on Facebook, too, uh, up until showtime tomorrow. So we'll be announcing the winner of the meet-and-greet pass tomorrow afternoon on the show. And I think along with uh, along with Forner, you're going to get to introduce Casey and the Sunshine Band? Yes, and what I'm a hoping... What that should be. I know. I think that'll be really cool, especially since we do Funky Friday. You know, I mean, we play a lot of Casey and the Sunshine Band anyway, but with Funky Friday, that'll be a, a perfect one uh, to get into the show that Saturday night, uh, the 30th, so I'm looking forward to that too. And then also uh, you'll be broadcasting your afternoon delight show from the fair, uh, I think beginning on Saturday? Yes. Uh, you know, we'll be out there each day. Somebody will be from uh, our group. We're going to have a couple different people broadcasting this year. In, uh, so it'll be myself and several others. And of course you'll be out there again, as you mentioned. And So we will be very busy. Yeah, we'll be out there. Uh, Saturday we'll open our tent up at noon and we'll start doing some giveaways and registering for prizes all week long. Uh, we'll broadcast from 3 to 6 each day from Saturday, this Saturday through Labor Day. So we will be out there every day of the fair. And certainly uh, Withers Dana Communications and Withers Broadcasting has a big role uh, in the fair each year and again this year uh, they'll be there also. Yes, uh, we'll be there. Our sister station WMIX will be in the tent with us as well and then of course sister stations from the Marion Withers group with uh, WVZA, TAO, WFRX, uh, also W3D and uh, WHET US 977. Those guys will be there too so we're looking forward to uh, having a whole group there at the that's, fair. That's great and again uh, get out and visit the fair. Uh, Ashley, thank you so much. Again, sure. Thank you for your job tonight. We had a lot of phone calls. You've handled them great. Appreciate that. Uh, get out and visit the fair. It's a, it's a great. Um I've been a fan of the fair since I was a little bitty boy, and uh, th that's a long time ago. And so uh, it's just a great uh, it's a great event for Southern Illinois. It's an event that that, as you heard, uh, uh, fair manager uh, Shannon Woodworth say earlier. You know, I talked about the economic impact. He talked about the human impact, about uh, just the the fact that you can make a lot of. It's just gr a great event for Southern Illinois, and it's 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 something that's very important to us here. And uh, I think there's a great lineup of guests. We talked about it again earlier. Uh, foreigner on 
on Saturday, Kenny Rogers Sunday, uh, Travis Tripp Monday, John Henninger on uh, Tuesday. We got uh, 38 Special going to be there, Rodney Atkins, uh, Casey and the Sunshine Band. So uh, I think a great lineup and, and scores and scores of uh, free entertainment, harness racing, uh, uh, USAC auto racing, just, I mean, just something for everybody. And, uh, you know, of all the events I've seen there, one that I really am very intrigued about, uh, of course, I've got a, a heart for uh, for, for mutt dogs. Uh, they've got one called Marvelous Mutts that uh, are dogs that are that are uh, uh, that they have that have basically have been rescued. They have trained and they're very really talented dogs. So uh, I'm I'm planning on visiting Marvelous Mutts before the fair is over with. So we look forward to that too. So it'll be a great event. So uh, get out and enjoy the fair beginning on Friday night, and we'll have a big role in it over there, both uh, Dana Communication and. Withers Broadcasting. Don't forget, Saturday morning Talking Sports, we're on this week from eight at 8 o'clock, and we're going to stay here until we get to interviewing all the coaches from the uh, from the Black Diamond Conference and the Ohio side of the River to River, so we'll be here probably two and a half, three hours Saturday morning to get that done, and uh, we look forward to that as we get ready to, to get, we get ready to get you ready for uh, high school football that kicks off on August 29th. Of course, we'll bring you the Benton Carterville game on that night. Justin Wyant and Travis Severn will be alongside that night, and we'll be uh, also bringing you the fifth quarter program immediately following that uh, that high school football game. So as you can see, we are very busy around here right now, but that keeps us out of trouble, and we look forward to uh, seeing you uh, over to fair next Wednesday night as we'll bring you sound off uh, from the DuCoin State Fair. With that said, we're going to wrap it up. Uh, for Ashley Bites, I'm Jim Muir. I'm speaking for all the good folks at Dana Communication. We sure hope you enjoyed the program tonight as much as we enjoy bringing it to you. With that said, so long, have a great rest of your evening, and God bless you.